Hey guys, how's it going? I know it's been a while, but I wanted to come back and make a video on replacing the diaphragm in your disavalve on your E46. Uh, a lot of these diaphragms do tear over time, uh, probably around the 100 to 150,000 mark, approximately. And uh, I haven't seen a video or a guide or anything on how to actually replace that diaphragm. Uh, so I'm going to do that for you today and uh, hopefully you can save the $300 on a new disavalve and get away with like a $20 diaphragm. So let's get into it. All right, so here we have the disavalve. Um, these are, oh, sorry, uh, two dis different disavalves. This smaller one with the hole right there, and you can tell that it's a little thinner, is from an M52 TU E46, so like a 99 to 2000, uh, 323 or 328. And this larger body one, see the comparison there? is off of an M54, so like a 325 or a 330 from like 2001 to uh, whenever the last year was, I think 2006. Uh, they are not interchangeable. This diameter right here is a little bit bigger on this one. So you'll need a um, the correct one for your manifold for it to work. But um, yeah, the uh, the diaphragm in this one is shot if uh, one way you can test it is if you cover that hole with your finger and you flex the flap and then you hold it it should hold but as you can see this one does not hold at all so let's uh replace the diaphragm and uh, see if it works all right so what you'll need um, your diaphragm of course and you can get this from the junkyard if you want to take apart a dissa and uh, see if you can find a good diaphragm somewhere in the junkyard. Uh, both, the diaphragm will work for both of these. So if you find you know, a DISA that's not the, the one you need, you can still take the diaphragm from it. Um, or you can buy one on eBay. I found a seller from Russia on eBay. If you look up DISA diaphragm, uh, it should pop up. And uh, that one, that seller sells diaphragms for about $15 plus shipping. Uh, so you need the diaphragm and then you'll need a screwdriver and you want to carefully pry this cap off. Uh, this cap right here is held in with a few snaps and then you'll have to undo the snaps here and here and then the cap should come off. Uh, you want to try your best not to stab too far into it or bend the cap too severely. But if you do, it's okay. You just have to uh, seal up whatever damage you created, either with tape or, or glue or something. Uh, so you can see the, the snaps let go there. Snaps let go there. So the, the cap is almost off. And then we'll undo these snaps. Hopefully without stabbing myself. And maybe a couple more. Oops. So that one's off, so I just need to get this one. And there we go. And you just pull it up and you can see there's a spring in there. That's uh, what returns your flap to the default position. So you take the spring out and uh, you can see that this diaphragm is damaged. You can see the cracks right there and there. Um, so we got the cap off. Hopefully you didn't break your cap if you're careful. Um, it should come out okay. You can see that I did break this one a little bit, uh, but it should be okay. If you take some pliers and kind of bend it back out, it should be okay. And I can always put a, a drop of super glue right there. Okay, so now you see that is open like that, and you can see how the, the flap moves. I need to take off this protective cover. There's just a couple clip snaps that hold that in. So you pop that with a screwdriver. Just those two legs hold it in. And you can see that uh, retaining ring, I guess you'd call it, right there. Use your screwdriver or a pick to uh, carefully pick it off. Um, I've taken this one off before, so it's a little more ready to come off than yours might be. And don't lose it. It it does like to uh, fly off like that. So now that the the clip is off, take that 
screwdriver and pry up on the arm. You just want to get it off of the pin right there. So just like that. And then pull it out. Now that that's out, the diaphragm will come off like so. Slide the new diaphragm on there and make sure it seats correctly. Yep, looks good. Slide the arm back in. You want the arm to look like that. Slide it back in. Put the arm over that post, like that. Put the retaining ring back on. Uh, maybe you can push it down with your thumbs. Maybe you'll need a screwdriver. Uh, maybe you'll need a small quarter inch drive socket to push that back on. But that's secure enough, it's not gonna fall off. Put the cap back on. Put your, oh, uh, before you do that, you wanna poke that down a little bit so that it uh, seats. You can see how this side is seated and this side's not. You just wanna go around with your screwdriver or a small pick and gently push that down. And then put the spring in and put the cap on. Make sure you line the cap up with that post right there. And it'll take some force, but push it down and it'll all snap shut. And now that it's all back together, the way you wanna test it is with your finger over that hole. Uh, this one, the diaphragm is actually not very good. That was just for a demonstration purpose. But uh, if you have a new diaphragm and uh, it's all sealed all the way around here, it should work. So you would flex that, put your finger over the hole, and then it should hold. This one kind of is, but it kind of is not doing it very well. So like that, it should hold like that. And then when you let your finger off, it closes or uh, opens rather. And uh, you can see this disavalve is kind of worn out. Um, as, I, as I'm turning it here, it's not turning there. So uh, this piece and perhaps the door flap is worn out. Uh, the good news is if you have an M54, they do sell rebuild kits where this door is metal. This pin actually comes in from the other side. So there's absolutely no chance of it falling into your intake manifold and uh, you get a new arm thing right there. Uh, so if your diaphragm's good, but you got some play there, look into those rebuild kits. Um, but if, if uh, you've replaced the diaphragm and it's holding and it, everything else looks okay, then uh, you're probably good to go in uh, putting it back in your car. But I wanna show you one more thing on how to bench test your disavalve before you put it back in the car just to verify that everything's working properly. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the disavalve some vacuum and then provide power and ground to this plug here and that will actuate this valve if you uh, have the disavalve working properly. And the way we're gonna do that is I have a plug here that'll go on there, um, although you don't have to. Uh, you can just grab onto the pins with uh, some alligator clips. But got that, got that, and we'll flip it over to this side. Uh, this little hole right here is where the disavalve um, gets vacuum from the intake manifold. And so we're gonna hook one lead up right here, and we're gonna leave this lead um, not touching because we wanna be able to actuate that valve. So uh, next step is to apply some vacuum. All right, so we got the uh, the vacuum pump. Um, if I hold my finger there, you can see that it um, creating a vacuum. So you want to put that on the hole right there, hold it on there snug, and start vacuuming. And that hole is a one-way valve, so it is um, letting air out of the chamber, creating vacuum and uh, not letting air into the chamber. All right, that should be enough vacuum there. 
and turn on the jumper pack get some power and oh, sorry and as I touch this it should actuate that flap just like that and you have enough vacuum for about three maybe four and that, that's it that's done right there well anyways, thank you for watching on how to uh, repair the diaphragm or replace the diaphragm in your DISA valve. Uh, the DISA valve is pretty important to the proper operation of your engine. Without a proper working DISA valve, your EC will definitely throw a check engine coat. Um, I haven't seen any of these videos or write-ups online before, so I thought I'd make one. Uh, like I said, the diaphragm is about, is about uh, 15 to 20 dollars or so from that one Russian supplier on eBay. Uh, just search up DISA diaphragm on eBay and it should pop up. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you.